Hey everyone, Grandmaster Ben Feingold here. I guess I'll record a video uh, before I play Arena today. I want to remind everybody to go to uschesschamps.com and you can see standings and pairings and games and all kinds of nonsense. Uh, the games start 2 p.m. Eastern time every day, 1 p.m. local time here, Central time, and I guess 11 a.m. on the West Coast. Um, there's one round a day. The time control is 40 and 90, game and 30, and then 30 seconds increment from move one. Uh, there's a 30 move draw rule, and um, there's two sections. The top section average rating is about 2650, and I guess my section average rating is 2525-ish. Uh, I'm white against Irina Crush in the first round. I'm ranked eighth, and she's ranked ninth by rating. Prizes are pretty good. Um, there's a players meeting starting in a little over an hour. Um, I've done my preparation, so I figure I'll make a video. I don't have my microphone with me, but the volume should be similar to what it usually is. I'm in my hotel room here at the Chase Park Plaza. So I don't know. I'll see how the video looks. And then I guess I'll just sit here when I make videos. I like this desk. Uh, maybe I'll open or close the curtains or if it's nighttime or something. And then whatever. You guys will complain anyway. Okay. Now, this game was played in 1982 when I was 12 years old. This is the first U.S. Open I went to in St. Paul, Minnesota. It was also the weakest U.S. Open probably ever. Um, the top two players were Soltis and Bizgeyer. They were the only two grandmasters. Uh, let's see. William Martz was a grand was an international master. I guess John Watson might have been an international master. And Martz and Soltis tied for first, I think, with 10. And Soltis won on tie breaks, if that means anything. Um, I was rated 2,050 to 2,100-ish, something like that. I got probably like 7 out of 12. There's actually a tournament book. Uh, on the tournament, I think by Jim Marfia, I think. Um, and this game is actually featured in the book. It's my only game that's in the tournament book. Uh, I was white. I played E4, which I don't play very much now, but when I was 12, I first move was random. My opponent played um, Alakine's Defense. I played Knight C3. I mean, I didn't know any theory when I was 12, so I just made I just played chess. Okay, D5 is a good move. E5, Knight E4 is a move. Okay, and now I played knight e2, um, not because that was my prep, but actually there was a game in the tournament before this game that was either in the bulletins or I saw it or something, and the game went this way, and I'd never seen that move, and I thought that was really interesting. The idea is to trap the knight, and my opponent's rated 1800 here, so since I'm paired down, I want to get like a very unusual, you know, unclear kind of position. Okay, he played knight c5, so his knight could escape. d4, and the knight went back to d7. Yeah, I don't know if I would do that. So actually, if my opponent ever plays e6, it's a kind of a French defense where it seems like white's probably a tempo up because black's made 4,000 knight moves. Um, but okay, I was 12, so e6. This is funny. In my last video, my game with Michael Brown, I was black in a Chagorn, and I played e3, a very similar pawn sacrifice. Okay, very similar. Uh, okay, knight f4, threatening, knight takes e6, even you at home see that, it's amazing. Uh, okay, so knight f6, moving his knight again, and um, it's funny, the knight went on a good journey, and um, I was just listening to Public Enemy earlier, and they went on a journey also. So that was, uh, this is a journey. So, uh, yeah, five moves to get to f6, and um, I still have no development with white, but my opponent's position is a little strange looking. Okay, bishop to d3. C5 makes sense, C3 makes sense, knight C6, knight F3. These moves actually make sense. I don't like that. Okay, queen C7. I'm not sure why you would play queen C7 unless you want to play E5, which I don't think you want to play. Okay, so queen E2, stopping E5, and um, also attacking the E6 pawn. CD4, CD4, bishop to D7, and then, yay, I got my pawn back. I'm the best. And that's the end of the video. No, that's not true. The game still continues. Queen b6. His queen was attacked, so he moved it away. And I castled. Okay, now my opponent did something very dangerous, although giving his pawn back, moving his queen twice, that's, I mean, obviously the last, you know, six or seven moves he hasn't played very well. But, okay, I'm, these aren't grandmasters here. This is me when I was 12 versus an 1800. So give us a break. Okay, so he traded everything, takes, takes. The idea is to win my d-pawn. And it looks like I can win a piece by taking on b6 and then taking the knight, which wins a piece. Okay, 
but he has a move that we call his Vishenzug. Instead of taking my queen, he takes my knight with check first, and then takes my queen. And now I'm just a pawn down, and I have doubled isolated pawns, and isolated pawn, and the two bishops. But okay, that's silly. I'm not going to trade queens when I don't want to. Okay, so after knight takes d4, I just take the knight, and luckily my knight is defending my queen. So he can't trade queens, he has to take his piece back, otherwise I'd be up a piece. Okay, and the main reason this maneuver that he played with taking on e6 and taking on d4 and getting his extra pawn back is I have the move bishop b5 check, otherwise he'd be okay, and he has to play king d8. And in the long run, this is just losing for black. I do have sort of an immediate win, but even if I didn't, uh, I mean, the bishop on f8 is terrible, his rooks haven't moved, his king is ridiculous, his queen's going to get harassed by my bishops and rooks, and I'm down a pawn for, like, basically everything. I have the two bishops, got higher rated, got dressed better than him. Yeah. Okay. Um, so his position is terrible, but luckily I have a forced win because his position is so terrible. So bishop e3, Morphe style, getting all of my pieces involved. And now my opponent did something that Morphe's opponents did when they were getting crushed, is they tried to trade queens, queen e4. And of course, trading queens is ridiculous for white. White's crushing black. Uh, if I don't want to trade queens other than what I did, which we're going to pause the video, uh, I could play queen h3, although I guess if he plays queen g4, trades queens anyway. So yeah. So he's probably hoping to trade queens here, but instead of trading queens, white has a forced win. So pause your video. I'll wait. My game with Irina starts in, so let's go. Okay, so obviously you found one of the three forcing moves you have to find, captures, checks, and threats. Well, my queen's attacked, so I got to get it going here. So I play bishop b6 check. Very easy to analyze because he has one legal move. And then I play queen takes b6 check. Very easy to analyze. He has one legal move. Okay, and I can play either rook to c1. I played rook a c1. I probably had a reason. I'm not sure what it was. And now he has three legal moves, but queen c4 and queen c2 aren't very interesting. So king b8. And now there's more than one way to win. I can't have you pause your video here because there's more than one answer. Um, basically, any reasonable move wins where you're attacking b7, like rook c7 or bishop c6 or queen c7 check must win. Even if it doesn't win, it wins because it has to win. Um... In fact, just off the top of my head, I, I wonder what would happen. Yeah, exactly. I wonder what would happen after rook c6 threatening rook a6 mate. I don't know. I wish I was better at chess, I would tell you. Yeah. And I and the thing is, I'm sure like a lot of things win, but I like this. I didn't play it, but I like it now. Okay, and it probably doesn't even work. There's probably some move I'm missing. Just, what move am I missing? Looks like he has to play queen g2 check. All right, I'm, too, I'm going to turn my engine on because I, I like this way of winning. I've never seen it before. And this game was played before I was born. So that's pretty impressive. All right, what's my stupid computer saying? Oh, it says queen a4, giving the queen away. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. It's actually funny. After queen a4, um, it wants me to play queen b6 check and rook fc1. It's, it plays for me. It doesn't care about a free queen. Okay, so a lot of moves win, but I played the quickest win because, you know, I was young. So I played bishop c6. Threatening queen b7 mate. Um, the only reasonable way to stop queen b7 mate is rook a7. There's unreasonable ways like queen b4, but okay, hanging the queen. And then after rook a7, I would play queen d8 mate because he cut off his escape square for his for his king. So after bishop c6, of course, he resigned. Notice, uh, even though the game was over 20 moves, um, he didn't move any of these pieces. Um, and his knight on f6, where if you just like show up to the video, I don't know how you did that. Um, or you weren't paying attention, which is more likely, you would, you would almost bet that it moved once, not that it moved one, two, three, four, five times. And his queen moved, I guess, four times. He played queen c7, queen b6, queen d4, queen e4. So basically, he moved his queen, knight, and king. And he didn't move his three pieces. I castle, got a nice safe king, my rook on the open line, queen and bishop, and I sacrificed a piece for this crushing mate. Nowadays, I would beat this guy in 90 moves in a drawn endgame. But back then, when I was younger, and I had more energy, and I played crazy, I won some quicker games, not as well played, but very interesting for you guys. Um, probably you're never going to see a game I played before 1982. That was the 1982 U.S. Open uh, in St. Paul, Minnesota. 
that was fun for me because my whole family went, my dad and my brother, my mom, myself. And I remember the car ride, we took a friend of ours who was a master, Lloyd Raleigh, who I think quit chess for a long time. Maybe he still plays now. Um, he was a lot older than me, so he's probably in his like 50s now. Um, I don't know if he plays chess anymore, but he was one of the top 10 players in Michigan. And he was maybe 20 or 21 when we took him. I don't think he had a great tournament, but he did okay. Um, I actually don't remember my dad and brother playing, although obviously my brother played. Um, otherwise, why would we go? And my dad would play because he was a master, but maybe he didn't because my mom was there. So maybe they were hanging out. He might have played too. I don't know. Um, that's my memory as I played. And I actually don't remember how many points I got, but I got about seven. I think I lost rating points. U.S. Opens generally aren't good for my rating. Um, this is actually back in the day when the U.S. Open was 12 rounds, and it was one round a day. So when I said I got seven, if you're thinking of the U.S. Opens today, which usually have nine rounds, I, I didn't do that well. Okay, this is Grandmaster Ben Feingold. I have to go off and play Irina now. Um, remember to like and subscribe and follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Please go to the website and donate. Uh, soon, in the next week, I would guess, I'm guessing, my son, Spencer Feingold, is going to start his own YouTube page and make videos similar to me. He's pretty funny also. His rating is about 2,200 plus tax. And he teaches chess for a living just like I do. He has about 15 students. And actually, we both used to teach Matt Larson, and then Matt Larson got higher rated than Spencer. They actually, they actually worked together even after Matt was higher rated than Spencer. Um, but... Eventually, he just worked with me, and um, Spencer's taught a lot of talented children because Spencer teaches chess camps a lot, and he gets a lot of the kids who are up and coming. So his YouTube channel is going to be very interesting, and I'll give you the URL and tell you all about it when it gets set up, probably in the next week. All right, wish me luck, and I'll make a video tonight and tell you how Irina crushed me, or I crushed her, or it was a boring draw, or all three. Okay, bye, everyone.